Heart House is uh, an organisation that is run in part by student committees. It's not necessarily all student committees, it's a combination on many of them of uh, st uh, alumni and um, uh, currently enrolled students. So I think that gives it um, a unique kind of um, place within uh, the University of Toronto. And indeed, um, a great deal of our programming is actually generated uh, by the clubs and committees. Um, so that, you know, you, there are many people who play in the orchestra, but the purpose uh, of the orchestra for the larger um, Hard House membership is, you know, that there are uh, three concerts that they actually perform a year, um, etc. It's certainly, I think, been, um, you know, the hub of student engagement uh, at the University of Toronto. I think um, in traditional terms it would have been the set student centre. Um, of course now, because of the diversity of students and the expansion of the campus and opportunity, I think there are many student centres in which you know, students feel is home for them to hang their hat outside of the classroom. But certainly for very many years, Hart House was the place. Um, and you know, we occupy one of many options uh, now for students to be engaged outside of the classroom. Hart House was a gift to the University of Toronto from the Massey family. Um, and um, Vincent Massey, who later went on to become Governor General of Canada, um, was a student uh, at the University of Toronto and then later went to the University of Oxford uh, for graduate work. And it was at the University of Oxford where he lived in a college-based system and also saw the power of possibility of bringing uh, and being part of an environment in which students came together from uh, not only their own college or their own academic program, but from across the university, that he uh, reflected back on his own experiences at the University of Toronto and noted that that had been missing for him. And from his, uh, his uh, biography, it certainly seems that he was a very engaged student outside of the classroom when he was a student at U of T. His family had um, a lot of money, and one can think of Massey Hall or Massey College or Massey Ferguson Tractors as uh, kind of things that people f frequently think about in terms of the Massey name. And um, he convinced his family um, that uh, part of their foundation money uh, should be dedicated to the building of um, such a, uh, an opportunity at the University of Toronto. And so Hart House was named after his grandfather, Hart Massey, um, opened in 1919, at a very different time at the University of Toronto when there were about 4,200 students, about 500 of whom were women. And Hart House uh, did become the, um, the, the place where students met from all across the university, all the academic programs, all of the colleges, um, in notion of common fellowship that was part of the ambition of the place. Um, it was, uh, women were not uh, part of uh, the vision of uh, the Massey Foundation in terms of Hart House and indeed women weren't uh, allowed into uh, Hart House as members of Hart House until 1972. Um, but the very structure, same structure that we have in place right now in terms of a strong cl club and committee basis um, is something that uh, had its beginnings right from the start of when the doors opened. And um, as much as I can tell, there was a warden and his secretary um, who were employed uh, by Hart House and the rest of um, uh, all activities were really brought to life by volunteers um, of students, faculty, staff and alumni. And this was also part of the Massey family's fa uh, vision that it would be students, faculty, staff and alumni who would come to Hart House um, in common fellowship. At the time also the YMCA was located um, at Hart House and the University of Toronto Athletics Association um, were operating what is now Hart House's gym, but at that time it was this um, separate entity. And it, uh, the kind of historic uh, terms of reference talk about the North Wing, that's the Athletics Wing, and the South Wing really being the main body of Hart House. I mean, all of that has changed, of course, over the years, and the Varsity Centre was uh, opened in around 78 or 79, and the University of Toronto Athletics Association disbanded, and Hart House took on full um, ownership of uh, the Athletic Centre as well. Hart House is built by Vincent Massey and architects uh, Sprott and Rolf. Uh, Henry Sprott being the architect and Ernest Rolf being the engineer. Uh, it was built between 1911 and 1919. 
Um, during the war, construction was slowed down. It wasn't really interrupted. It had this kind of rather long gestation. Trinity College got built in two years. Harkos it took you know, nine or eight years to build. It. And over the, t over the course of the life of Hart House, it started out as a kind of a smaller project and it grew. Originally, there wasn't going to be, there was a, 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 a gym that was built in 1890, right where our gym is. And they weren't going to tear that down originally, but then they decided that it would make sense to make, make a beautiful quadrangle, which is very much part of the style of Gothic. And the fortunate part about that long gestation was the um, symbolism in the building is richer because of what happened during that time. Now we're in the Hart House Library, and in the back corner of the library, there's a beautiful set of stained glass windows. And the windows tell us a little bit about Hart House. Um, you can see on the bottom left is the symbol for, or shield for Bellow College. That's where Vincent Massey went to school in Oxford. University College, one of the original colleges at U of T. Canadian Officers Training Corps, which uh, was a uh, huge thing at U of T up until about 1960. And then the 147th Battalion. So these are talking about the war that had just happened or was happening when the building was being built. And then you'll see the monk, uh, which is interesting. I wasn't expecting to see the monk. Uh, and then the knight in training arbor, alluding back to this kind of more uh, pastoral time before the Industrial Revolution, um, people had a better relationship with the God and the, and the world around them. Uh, Hot houses, um, co art houses, art collection um, is also of some value that there are some pieces that are simply too valuable to actually put on onto the walls just for public um, in public space without being protected and so we actually have our unfortunately our more valuable works are actually in the vault. Warden Bickerseth established the collection in 1921 with a purchase of a new Canadian work by A.Y. Jackson who was a member of the group of seven at the time. So um, the first uh, before the war area, a lot of the collections did focus on the Group of Seven, which at the time were um, really the vanguard of Toronto art. Um, and uh, the collection quickly was established as being one of the premier private collections in Canada, um, having major works by A.Y. Jackson, uh, Tom Thompson, um, and m many other group members from the Group of Seven. So that was really, uh, it's really was born from the foundation of um, quite an extensive collection of major uh, landscape works from the Canadian tradition. As the time progressed, the collection's mandate shifted back and forth from times, because uh, it generally is organized around a student committee um, with an advisor. Throughout the years, the focuses have completely switched, depending on who is on the committee, some strong personalities. So there are times there were that there were very focused Attentions paid on, for example, Painters 11, which was a group of abstract painters that grew that were in Toronto in the 1960s. Uh, and actually, we have quite an extensive collection of non-figurative work from the 1960s, when there was a focus, a very keen focus on it from the collection then. Each room really sort of stands almost in for something that Hart House represents. Um, for example, when we were in that music room and that student was playing piano, um, that's something that would have been happening here at Hart House for 80 years now. And um, so when we chose the art to go in that room to reflect that musical sensibility, uh, it, that was actually very important to us because we wanted the, you know, the room uh, to really reflect its use uh, as much as possible and its reflect its uh, what it was originally intended to be. So we do have a focus on um, maintaining the collection's um, focus on um, what is the newest and best in contemporary art in Canada. And that's a, a, something that has been going on since 1921 and has resulted in a very strong collection of Canadian art. So um, very happy to keep that tradition going. Art House also has a farm, uh, and uh, it's about an honest hour's drive away from Toronto, which is a great feature. It's in the town of Caledon, on the township of Caledon, um, and uh, it's a hundred acres on the Niagara Escarpment. Um, and this was purchased uh, in uh, the late 1940s. Uh, Nicholas Ignatieff was uh, warden at that time, 
and um, this piece of land uh, was bought uh, with a farmhouse uh, as an original building and a couple of kind of stone barns and sheds. It's literally a venue or a, a place where student groups can uh, access it and book it and stay overnight. It has a large industrial sized kitchen. Uh, it has uh, very modest sleeping quarters. Um, I don't believe there are showers. Uh, the the, the loos do flush and there is running water, but it's not. Uh, it's certainly not uh, high lux out there. Um, but it's a, a magnificent uh, piece of property. There are three ponds. There's a sauna there. Um, there's an, an additional uh, building that uh, allows possibility for two groups to be up on the space uh, simultaneously. Groups stay overnight in very modest bunk quarters, or they, you know, use the foam mattresses and pull out their sleeping bag and on the floor, pitch a tent. Um, and Hart House also organises four seasonal activities there. The Hart House Farm Committee actually. One in the fall, one in the winter, one in the spring, and one in the summer. Um, Hart House also um, um, generates its own maple syrup, uh, and um, there are about uh, 400 uh, maple trees that are tapped and uh, sugar bush operation. And in fact, one of those um, four seasonal uh, events is uh, called Sugaring Off, where um, the purpose of which is to you know, kind of uh, go up and, and see what that's like and uh, to taste the, uh, the syrup and uh, have a nice day out in the you know, beginning of spring. The Soldier's Tower actually is not a part of Hart House. It was built after Hart House was completed. The Soldier's Tower was built by the same architect as Hart House. It was built between 1919 and 1923. It's uh, raised money um, um, from the University of Toronto student community um, for, for uh, University of Toronto students who served in the First World War and lost their lives. Um, and indeed they raised um, a great deal of money in that regard. Without a doubt, my favourite room of Hart House is the Great Hall. I mean, it's a, it's a spectacular uh, uh, room. The Great Hall is uh, the most symbolic room in the building. Uh, during the First World War, when Hart House was under construction, many people were kind of wigged out that they were spending all this money in detail or money in, in resources on building this fancy building. And so the architects and Vincent Massey came up with the idea to memorialize the war in the building. And you see more of that in the Great Hall than any other part of the building. Although I have to say that I've been in this position now three and a half years or thereabouts, and uh, there's, there's not a day probably that I come into this building that I don't have an appreciation of where I work. It's a magnificent place um, to work. And you know the the design uh, and detail and just the, the 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 thoughts that went into the architecture of the building is just stunning. Um, and so I think that for me the the sense of um, working in this place um, is a privilege to be surrounded by such magnificent contemporary Canadian art um, that that changes actually. So um, it's not like that one room in terms of its configuration of painting stays. It, it's it's refreshed on about an annual basis. At the um, 1,231st meeting of the Board of Stewards, so you know this is a body that's been in operation for a long time and has met uh, regularly as, as the 1,231st meeting suggests. Um, Hart House's Board of Stewards, which is comprised of um, students, um, student union representatives. Um, presidential designates and also a member of governing council. Um, they, at, their, at their meeting they passed the vision statement for Hart House. Uh, Hart House is a living laboratory of social, artistic, cultural and recreational experiences where all voices, rhythms and traditions converge as the vibrant home of the education of the mind, body and spirit envisioned by its founders. Hart House supports and provides spaces to awaken the capacity for self-knowledge and self-expression. Every time I did many, many a tour with children here, um, all you know, school of children will just arrive one day and, and we're open, we don't care. They want to come in, they can show things. And they come in and, and they are like, wow, awesome, it's like Harry Potter. Again and again and again, they say the same thing. But it is, it's exactly like Harry Potter, the building that they had the, um, they shot part of it at um, Queen's, Queen's University in Oxford. 
I went to see the space, but it was closed the day I went to see it. But anyway, it's the, the space is wider than our Great Hall. It's about as long as our Great Hall is at the neck. It's, so it's a little bit bigger than our Great Hall, but detailed in much the same way. And so, of course, in the, the movie, it looks exactly like it because it's kind of based on the same room. Thank <laughs> you.